We have Daniel. We have Daniel from Lagos, Nigeria. You're welcome, Daniel. We have Hassan Ibrahim Adebola from Nigeria. Bekis from Nigeria. You're welcome. As you're joining, just drop your name and where you're joining us from. We have Ifiai from Lagos, Nigeria. You're all welcome. All right, everyone, welcome, welcome. Um, as you're joining, we'd like to meet you. Please drop your name and where you're joining us from. Uh, we're excited to have you all join this call uh, this evening. Welcome. Welcome everyone. All right, I can see Abdul from Bauchi, welcome. If you're just joining us, uh, it's still the welcoming time. So please feel free to uh, drop your name and your location. Let's get to meet you. Uh, we're happy to have you all on this call. Welcome.
All right, everyone, good day. If you're just joining, uh, please feel free to drop your name and where you're joining us from. I would like to meet you. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Adewale, welcome. Benedict, welcome. All right, in the next two minutes, we'll get started. So we're just waiting for more people to join. Welcome, guys. All right, so it's five o'clock Nigerian time. So let's get started. All right, my name is Lekon Akin Sunde, and I have my colleagues also on the call. Uh, and I can see, oh, I have Tosin also on the call. I have Wura. Tosin is uh, one of our main speakers for today. Uh, you all will get to meet him any moment from now. I have Wura in the panelist. I have Sarah, uh, who is a project manager for this event. I have Ezekiel, I have Anselm all on the call. So we're excited to have you all. Uh, feel free to share the, the link uh, to join this webinar with your friends. I can see the numbers keep increasing. So uh, we are happy to have as many as uh, possible on the call. So let's, let's uh, share, you know, sharing is caring. Uh, but without further ado, let's get straight into the business of today. Uh, let's get straight into the business of today, All right? Okay, fantastic. So uh, I will take the opening session uh, where I'll introduce you all to uh, who we are, Data Science Nigeria. Uh, you get to meet us, you get to know what we do at Data Science Nigeria. And then my colleague, uh, Sarah, will take it up from there to introduce our speakers for today, All right? So I'll be talking to you about data science Nigeria, and I'll also quickly talk to you about uh, career opportunities in data science, right? And um, as much as possible, uh, please pay rapt attention so you can get to meet us, you can get to know uh, who we are at uh, data science Nigeria. All right, so we are the number one AI uh, learning community and solution delivery network in Africa. Uh, our work has been showcased and it has won several awards and celebrated in Africa and across the world. And this is as a result of our hundreds of thousands of training programs that we have you know, done, uh, facilitated both online, offline, you know, over face-to-face -face and uh, content development and job placement. Uh, essentially, we have uh, a vision and the big vision we have is to train 1 million artificial intelligent talent in 10 years, right? 1 million artificial intelligent talent in 10 years. As part of being the foremost and the number one AI learning and solution delivery network in Africa, uh, we've won several awards. Uh, this is one of the awards we have here. Uh, best academic poster at the 21st ACM conference. 
Now, the SM conference is one of the uh, world's most competitive conference, right? That brings experts from across the world, experts in economics and computation. And then interestingly, we uh, emerged as uh, the with the you know prize of the best poster, you know, uh, at that particular conference. Also, most recently, uh, during the heat of the COVID-19, uh, we participated in the X Prize competition, uh, where we emerged as the only African finalists, right? Only African finalists. And what we did was that we built um, COVID-19 model, you know, models to predict COVID-19 infection rate and to also prescribe actions for safely uh, reopening the society. And um, we run the biggest free AI learning platform on the continent today, you know, across campuses, across cities, uh, through online, offline, project-based, and then content uh, development. And what you have on your screen right now just gives us a quick shot of um, some of our platforms. We have 30 of these unique platforms, right, at Data Science Nigeria, where we, you know, churn out a lot of, you know, free premium, you know, free content um, in our you know, vision towards our vision of raising 1 million AI talent. All right. So we have programs for beginners. We have training programs for kids, for intermediate to expert, you know, uh, for students and also for professionals and executives. Right. And as part of one of our, you know, very big uh, training program, we, we, we call it AI Invasion. All right. Uh, which is a pan Nigeria free AI learning platform. You know, it, it happens for a week long. And then what we do is that we take the knowledge of Python programming, machine learning to cities. Uh, this year we had uh, 70 cities. Uh, we, you know, it's a week long also. And um, I mean, it, it, the testimonies are amazing. You know, how we're able to, you know, bring volunteer tutors who we have trained who would then go into all of these cities to be able to facilitate sessions. Now, in order to sustain our amazing impact, we also have uh, what we call the AI Plus Club. And that's why I'm sure a couple of us who are on this call already are members of the AI Plus Club. But if you're not, uh, links will be dropped so that you can join the free learning community, right? For you to um, participate in learning, do AI projects, learn uh, artificial intelligence, right? Uh, with a community of um, enthusiasts and professionals. And these are some of the pictures from the AI Plus Club learning programs. All right, so we also have a book we call it the Introduction to Artificial Intelligence book, all right? Uh, this book already has over a million direct downloads. And uh, this book literally demystifies artificial intelligence, right? Because it, it talks about, about 90 use cases, you know, and expert thoughts, you know, for students. So it's something that you would be interested in. Uh, links will also be dropped on the chat room so that you can be able to, you know, download a free copy of the book uh, for yourself. So we have communities also for the kids, like I mentioned earlier on. This is also get towards training the kids, you know, uh, letting them understand what it means, right, to, to um, you know, learn AI, what it means to do, you know, solve problem with artificial intelligence. So we have communities uh, for the, you know, kids and the teens, right? These are some of the pictures from some of our engagement uh, with the kids and teens. We teach them robotics, you know, Python programming, artificial intelligence, and all that. And also, um, in order to build sustainability in terms of learning, we also have clubs that we've established in those schools such that, you know, the kids can also learn in groups, you know, of course, with uh, a facilitator right there to help them and hold their hands. And then interestingly, also, we have a book, all right, uh, that, you know, seeks to introduce artificial intelligence and Python programming to beginners. You know, it is a fantastic book. This book already secured multiple global endorsements. Um, and these are just screenshots from the book. Very, very easy to read, very, very easy to digest, right? Very, very easy to read. And we also distribute free copies of these books uh, to you know, teachers because we understand that teachers are nation builders, right? So we give free copies of this book also uh, to teachers, right? Such that the teachers can you know, not just redistributing it to them, we also train them. So we call the program Train the Teacher, right? We train them in understanding data science, artificial intelligence, and we give these books to them, and then they can in turn go back to their schools to train uh, their students, thereby creating a multiplier impact, right? Uh, 
for our vision of training 1 million artificial intelligent talent in 10 years. Also, currently ongoing is our AI for Absolute Beginner classes. All right, AI for Absolute Beginner classes. This is uh, a session, you know, it's a six week session. This is the first week. So we have the sessions on Tuesdays and Thursdays where we, you know, teach Python programming, we teach data science, machine learning, all for free. You know, uh, we have the training holding on premise at our AI hub. And also, uh, it also happens on Zoom and YouTube. So the link is right here. Uh, my colleagues will also drop the link, you know, for you to register if you've not already uh, registered. All right, so that's what we have, Data Science Nigeria. So straight into it, I'd like to talk to you very quickly about career opportunities in data science uh, before I hand it over to my colleague, Sarah, to introduce our next speaker. Now, as the world is today, right, we have a lot of data being churned out every day, every day every day. I mean, data is everywhere. I'm very sure you all would have heard of the term big data, right? And the interesting thing is that because this webinar is about understanding what opportunities exist, right, uh, with data science and the opportunity for you to study at the prestigious uh, University of Success, right? So, and the way it works, right, is once you understand the opportunities that you know, exist, right? It becomes easy for you to make up your mind to say, oh, indeed, you really want to study data science. And that's why my slides will really talk to you about this career opportunity so that you can make your decision as fast as possible, all right? And then you can easily just sign up and get yourself an advanced degree. Now, a data scientist solves problem with large amounts of data. You know, an example is when you do an analysis of tweets to figure out whether a tweet is a positive sentiment or a negative sentiment. That's an example. And there are three common roles in data science. Three common. There are a lot of them, a lot of them, but these are the three common roles that we have in data science, which means that if you're looking at a career in data science, then you should be looking at being a data scientist or a data engineer or a data analyst, all right? Now, the question is, who is a data scientist? A data scientist will be able to take data science project from hand to hand, all right? These are the set of people that can help in storing large amounts of data. That's the first end because that is where the whole activity of data science starts from, you know, storing data. They can create predictive models. They can model processes, and then they can also tell stories about their findings, all right? That is where data scientist is in a nutshell, right? End to end data science and analytics project. And interestingly, uh, there are common you know, uh, sayings that data science is the sexiest job of the 21st century. Why? Because it is a very lucrative career uh, such that you know, if you plug into it, I mean, you can, it can, the sky is just the starting point really because it is, you know, in terms of average salary, this is in terms of US dollars now, 115,000 for average salary right and all you need in terms of skills mathematics programming and then communication you must be able to communicate uh, your findings and most of the tools that are used by data scientists includes sql uh, python programming and then how programming we also have the data engineering role a data engineer right is versatile is you know they are versatile generalist who create data pipelines to help process large amount of data right so essentially what they do really is all about the just like the name engineer they are the ones who literally create the connectivity between different sources of data so that we can have data all aggregated for more analysis right so they typically focus on coding they clean up data sets and then they also implement requests that comes from the data scientist so you can think of a data engineer as a person who does the cooking all right for the data, the cooking of the data. Then you have the data scientist who takes what has been prepared, does some you know, extraction, transformation, and loading them into advanced analytics models, all right? And if you choose to become a data engineer, I mean, the opportunity is enormous. In terms of average salary is $100,000. Uh, in terms of skills that you need, programming is part of it. Some mathematics and understanding of big data because we are in the world of big data. Right. And in terms of tools, you need Hadoop, you need 
NoSQL and SQL databases, and then you also need Python programming. All right. Last but not the least career opportunity that we have uh, in you know, uh, data science and the beautiful world and amazing world of data science is a data analyst, all right? A data analyst helps people from across the company to understand data insights that they have unearthed. In essence, a data analyst is that person that can literally glean out insight, all right, from data. That's what they do. They glean out insight from data, which means that the data already exists, but this set of people are the ones that can literally help extract what insights existing data. And the opportunity is also very enormous uh, for a data analyst, just like you have it right here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the question is, how do these roles connect? Now, you would see that this um, diagram you have right here. So you have the data scientist who is like the guy at the center who combines all the characteristics of all of the different uh, career options. All right, this data scientist can be a software engineer. Why? Because he understands how to turn model, how to productionize model, turn models into production ready, um, you know, models, all right? This same person knows how to communicate, right? He understands now that you have insight, right? Then there's a need to communicate. And then this same person understands mathematics, understands statistics, understands algorithms. That is a data scientist. Now we have the data engineer who also combines software engineering and then math starts an algorithm skills, right? This is a person who understands software engineering because he or she can literally go into databases, write SQL, you know, um, SQL codes to extract data, to transform data, and then to load them for further analysis. Then we have the data analyst. This is someone that understands you know, mathematics, statistics, and algorithms, and can also make data communication. He or she can communicate data, right? And I'm sure for everyone who is on this call today, you would realize that you actually have, you know, a skill ar around this. If you, I mean, I'm very sure people, there are people here who understand math, stats, and algorithms, basic software engineering, and data communication. But if you don't understand math and stats just yet, at least you know how to talk, right? The art of storytelling itself is one of the key characteristics of a data analyst or a data scientist, right? So what that means is that if you can talk, if you can sell an idea, then a career in data science is for you, right? So you need to consider it. If you can talk and sell an idea, a career in data science is for you. If you understand software, you love to work with software, right? Then a career in data science is for you. And I'm very sure every one of us at some point in our life we have done some mathematics, right? Even if you did not, did not like your elementary mathematics, it's high time you started going back to it. Why? Because what it means is it gives you a good solid background for you to pursue a career in data science. And these are some of the backgrounds of people who have you know, decided to go and advance their courses, right? In data science, we have mathematics. So we have guys who come from mathematics, who then go into the university, like University of Sussex, to you know pursue advanced degree in data science. We have engineering, we have physics, computer science, statistics, economics, business. All right. When you see business, economics, you know, we can talk about social sciences, right? If you're from social sciences, then a career in data science is right for you. If you're from pure science, pure and applied sciences. Fantastic. Interestingly, if you're also from the humanities, from heart, I tell you a career in data science is something that you can also consider because we have what we call social data science, all right, such that you can begin to understand human patterns. You can begin to understand human behavior and predict them using data. So the world of data science is amazing, is interesting, and um, the encouragement for everyone today is that you need to plug into it. And that's all I have for you. I'm gonna call my colleague, uh, Sarah, to introduce our next speaker who is gonna to talk to us about the future of artificial intelligence. And I trust that you all will enjoy the session. And if you're enjoying the session already, why not feel free to drop a fire emoji. Let's cut some fun in the chat room also as we proceed. Thank you very much. Wow, 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 wow. That was wonderful. Thank you so, so much, Lekon. Lekon is a, uh tech delivery lead 
as Data Science Nigeria. As I said, if you enjoyed the session, feel free to drop your favorite emoji, a fire emoji. So you can drop your questions on the Q&A and all questions will be duly attended to before the end of the session. So if you have any question for Lekon or any other qu any question you might have, just drop it on the Q&A session. Okay, so our next speaker is Professor Enrico Scalas. He's a professor of statistics and probability at the University of Sussex. His research interests are on anomalous diffusion and its application to complex systems, the foundation of statistical methods and probabilities method applied to physics, finance, and economics. He's the author of more than 140 publications. So today, Professor so Enrico will be speaking to us on the future of AI and is still going to give us a, a, a short le lecture on a course in data science. So let's welcome Professor Enrico. Professor Enrico, do you want me to, to will, you, will you like to? First of all, can you hear me? I can hear you. Will you like to share your screen, your slide from your end or? I will try to share my screen first and okay. uh, see how it works. Okay, okay, okay. Let's say desktop share. Okay, can you see my screen now? I think so. Yes, we can, I can see your screen. That's great. And this is the presentation on the future of artificial intelligence with some elements of data science. So first of all, uh, thank you very much for uh, the invitation. Uh, uh, thank you very much to Data Science Nigeria for this invitation, this opportunity, which is a great opportunity for me to present uh, to uh, people interested in uh, uh, artificial intelligence and data science. So hopefully you'll be able to hear me continuously during my presentation. I know I have roughly 15 minutes. I, I see many comments and questions coming, but uh, I will try to answer them later. So let's go uh, directly. So uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, this is uh, uh, my uh, web page if you want to know more about me. And uh, uh, just to mention that uh, uh, I am working at this university, the University of Sussex. This is in the United Kingdom, in Brighton, actually. But we are uh, not in central Brighton, but we are in a beautiful park, which is the South Down National Park. So we are surrounded uh, by a green area. And uh, as here is a raining, uh, uh, often it's really very green and beautiful. Uh, normally it is not raining for many days, one after the other, but it is uh, like, uh you have maybe one hour of rain and then sun and then again rain i mean it's very variable weather but uh now i have requested to present um a, um a talk on the future of artificial intelligence and there is this famous quote it is difficult to make predictions especially about the future. So it turns out this is a quote coming from uh, Denmark, uh, actually in the 20th century, apparently. And this is the original Danish uh, version of this, something like the advanced spore is another Gelder fremtiden. Sorry for my bad Danish pronunciation. And uh, it is usually uh, attributed to a lot of people. So I did my research and it turns out actually that all the people to which this quote, uh, to whom this quote is attributed, they, they never uh, mentioned this. Uh, on the contrary, it was a Danish politician, Karl Christian Steinke. In his autobiography, uh, it is Favel Otak, which means uh, goodbye and thank you, uh, who uh, um, quoted this thing. Uh, as uh, somebody telling this sentence in uh, a parliamentary debate in, um, in Denmark in the 1930s. Now, uh, I am essentially extrapolating the present towards the future, and I am presenting you 
topics that, uh, briefly, of course, that are important trends in artificial intelligence and data science. And this is not the usual kind of things that you will be learning about. Uh, it's not about robot intelligent machines and so on. So the first one is probabilistic causality. The second one is the approximation of solutions of partial differential equation. And the third one is rigorous results. So data science and artificial intelligence tools work so well. Why? Many of these tools are heuristic tools. So they have been uh, introduced without uh, rigorous mathematical theory. And now mathematicians are trying to catch up and understand why these methods. First point is causality here. So uh, for each of these topics, uh, I am referring you to a paper which is in the transparencies. I hope the transparencies are made up, uh, after the talk. And so you can go online and look for the papers just by uh, looking for the title or the authors in, uh, in, um, in a search. So what is uh, probabilistic? So when in, in many fields of applied sciences, uh, you do not have uh, fully fledged theories explaining uh, how things are working. So just to mention one of these theories, for instance, uh, the theory uh, in mechanics, uh, in classical mechanics that explains how things are moving. Yeah, so here we have a clear theory with a lot of nice equations. And in principle, we can uh, solve and discuss many systems. But if you go to medicine, for instance, there are not so many equations uh, explaining uh, uh, that a disease is causing a symptom. Yeah, there is no uh, equation. There are connections like based on observations, empirical observations and data. Uh, and then that you have a certain disease, I don't know, for instance, diabetes, then one of the symptoms is that you have, uh, you are um, thirsty or many other examples you can think. And in several cases, we are aware of the presence of a directed cause. So these causal relationships can be represented by uh, graphs where the, uh, the graphs are a, a plot like this one with nodes which represent variables. And these variables will, can be random variables or deterministic variables, but in general, they will be random variables because there will be some background noise affecting them. And then uh, you have uh, an arrow, a directed arrow pointing to uh, the uh, uh, um, effect. So this is the simple case of a directed cause. A less simple case is the following. So you have a symptom, you have a disease, but it is not the disease that is causing directly the symptom, but there is a common cause. So you have a certain symptom, you have a certain disease, and the two are associated, but uh, uh, this is due to something else, a common cause, which is both causing the disease and the symptom. So for practical purposes, you, you could observe the same uh, behavior in the data, but without uh, uh, some, some theory, which is represented here by these graphs, uh, you cannot really discover that there are common causes. This is quite, uh, um, this is a quite common situation in science uh, that you have a, a, a cause in which the disease uh, uh, is then determined. And then at the same time, you have a symptom. So for instance, there could be uh, here a gene which gives you your symptom and also gives you uh, the disease. But uh, the gene is perhaps not giving always the disease, but just the symptom. And so you will not be sick, for instance, or vice versa. You might be with this disease, but not with the symptom. And uh, sometimes by analyzing data with the frequency of um, um, of symptoms and the frequency of the disease, 
uh, and making correlations between symptoms and disease, you will not understand this. But then there are even more complicated situations, like this situation here, where there is, in fact, the disease which is causing the symptom. And uh, uh, however, there is also a common cause, yes. So if you want to know more about uh, uh, this kind of um, uh, framework, uh, which is very important in machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, and uh, uh, for many practical purposes, I can tell you that the theory of uh, causal probability or probabilistic causation is well developed for uh, uh, graphs like those ones uh, called directed acyclic graphs. Uh, and uh, uh, I, um, I am sort of uh, encouraging you to read papers and book by Judea Pearl to learn more about this topic. Approximations of partial differential equations. So partial differential equations are a way to this, the uh, physical world and uh, by physical word, I just mean the reality. This is based on our language and our uh, possibility of using a mathematical description of the reality. And they create a lot of interesting relationship variables, uh, but they are quite complicated sometimes. And uh, uh, I hope you can hear, still hear me. Are you still there? Yes, we can. Loud and clear. Yes, we can. Thank you, thank you. So because I had just a notification that my internet connection was not working. So uh, I am not even plotting here a partial differential equation, but uh, I am plotting a problem. For instance, you, you, this is the wing of an aircraft and you want to study and determine the flow of air around the uh, wing. And uh, for, for instance, for different speeds of the wing uh, and therefore of the aircraft. Uh, this is creating essentially uh, the force uh, which is pushing the aircraft uh, uh, high and then keeping the aircraft uh, in the atmosphere uh, and flying, yes? So there are a set of partial differential equations uh, um, that are called Navier-Stokes equations that are used in um, computational fluid dynamics. And solving these equations uh, with traditional methods is very nice and possible. Uh, by the way, these equations are also used for weather forecast, the same set of equations used in a different setting. Uh, Navier-Stokes equations, yes. But solving them is usually, uh, even today with supercomputer, whatever you wish, uh, time consuming, ex exceptionally time consuming. So it may take some hours to obtain uh, a very detailed plot of the flow of air and information about position and velocity of air particles, etc. So uh, pressure, velocities, and all these quantities. So uh, once you have solved the problem, however, uh, you can teach uh, a neural network, uh, which is represented schematically here, to do the same computation or better to interpolate uh, uh, the computation that you have done. And uh, uh, it turns out that uh, this is a nice optimization problem. You have your target solution. You have your neural network where you have layer of neurons communicating again, very similar to graphs here. So graphs are again here, yes. And then each graph here, uh, each link is uh, endowed with a weight uh, which you are trying to maximize or optimize in order to reproduce what your empirical uh, analysis uh, is giving you or what your simulation is giving you, yes? And, uh, and once you have done that, uh, if you want to reproduce uh, in a different situation, a plot like this one, by slightly changing the wing shape uh, or changing the velocity, etc., you just click your computer and in a few seconds or maybe less than one second, you have the result. This is uh, another which is very important uh, and uh, I am expecting a lot of progress here. You have to be careful, however, that you are training your neural network 
with a certain set of parameters. And if you are doing something outside this set of parameters, the neural network will likely give you the wrong answer. And you may have a disaster in uh, uh, when you are designing a very critical machinery, uh, etc. And uh, uh, yeah, very quickly, uh, let us go to the third point, which is rigorous results. So we have seen here what is the meaning of applying machine learning and artificial intelligence tools to real problems very quickly. I, can, I, I could give you only a flavor of what this is about, but essentially we want to, uh, as always in approximation problems, minimize the distance or some distance uh, between our output uh, and the target output. So this is an optimization problem. This optimization problem can be formulated uh, uh, mathematically in an exact way, and sometimes it can be solved. So this paper here, Dr. Serving Learning, is um, introducing you, if you wish, and uh, if you have the patience of going through the mathematics, to many cases in which uh, you can get uh, a grip uh, of why uh, the machine learning tool is really working. But I have limited time, and uh, uh, we uh, have mentioned uh, uh, R before. And I wanted to illustrate this uh, uh, programming language very briefly with a Monte Carlo simulation. So this is a Monte Carlo program in which uh, you input uh, one, ta one million uh, points into a random number generator, which will uh, generate uh, one million samples of uh, random numbers uniformly distributed between zero, one, and then by using these commands, you plot uh, the result. So if I run the program, sorry, oops. This is the plot I am getting. So this is the probability density function for the uniform distribution between zero and one. And the blue line is the exact value. It is equal to one uh, from zero to one and zero elsewhere from minus infinity to zero and from one to plus infinity to zero. And you see these dots around are the histogram created by this comment uh, with your uh, simulated data. You see there is noise there, but our simulated data are uh, starting approximating the real uh, um, probability density function. If I had more time, I would give you even more examples, but uh, let's go back to uh, the presentation. And uh, last, let, uh, let, us, uh, let me conclude uh, with um, some information basic information about research in data science at Sussex. We have a research center called DISCUS. Uh, and then research in data science is done in, in uh, at least these uh, uh, three departments and uh, in the Sussex Humanities Lab. Um, a, you, uh, you mentioned already that uh, it is more and more important uh, in uh, history archaeology, um, uh, uh, literary studies, uh, um, and then social sciences, etc., to use uh, data collected maybe even over the centuries and uh, represent them in a way that can help, for instance, the historian to uh, understand phenomena that uh, happened and that they are not so clearly um, understandable if you are not uh, using uh, statistical tools uh, uh, provided by uh, data science. And the uh, research center is the Data Intensive Science Center at the University of Sussex, which offers a range of uh, activities uh, uh, for master students. Uh, in case in the future you will be our masters. 
Of course, uh, 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 they offer interdisciplinary master projects uh, with supervisors who are from many departments and schools across the university. Uh, so if you are interested in a specific topic and it is not covered by your lecturer, maybe some researcher uh, in Uh, so their peer mentoring program is maybe someone who has been alumni, al alumnus of Sussex or for other reasons connected to the University of Sussex and uh, a meeting regularly uh, a group of students to uh, mentor them about their future career in data science uh, and in the industry. Then there are, of course, these student challenge events, for instance, uh, uh, data camp, hackathons, etc., in which you have to solve some specific problem using the tools you are learning. And finally, also, uh, last but not least, uh, data science seminars series that are available to our master's students and PhD students. Uh, let us uh, conclude with some words about your career from my point of view. Uh, there are two kinds of data scientists, developers, creators, and users of existing methods. So it is easier and faster to become a user of existing methods and techniques, but you have to be very careful because if the methods you are using become obsolete in five or to 10 years, you can find yourself with difficulties in finding new jobs, etc. So um, there, there is a very fast um, uh, change of patients and also of tools. And you need to stay updated, especially if you want to work at the user uh, level. So my recommendation is if you can become developers, creator, innovators somehow, try to introduce new ideas, new methods, new libraries, new applications, uh, patents, etc. It may be more difficult, but uh, you will be never out of the job market. And maybe you will create your own company, perhaps, who knows. Uh, and, uh, and you can start straight away while you're learning machine learning, uh, uh, artificial intelligence. You could start writing your own Python or R libraries. And this is your starting point. For instance, there is, a, there is no R library that is doing some task that you need. Why don't you write one? Or there is no library uh, for this specific, or, or, or the, the existing libraries, you don't like them, or they may have mistakes or errors. You can correct them, you can modify them, uh, you can work on them, you can extend them. You can uh, create new tools, new machine learning tools. Uh, maybe you can prove theorems uh, about uh, why machine learning is working in some specific cases. There is no limitation for you. Finally, um, which kind of companies do we have contact to? Uh, so our uh, master programs are collaborative interdisciplinary programs uh, within a range of uh, departments and schools, as I has, have mentioned before. Uh, our graduated people uh, go into uh, all sorts of data science related jobs, and I give here some examples, and these companies are uh, partners uh, of uh, uh, Sussex in some form, depending on agreement. It's just a set of companies uh, with which we have a clear relation. Important and interesting point, this is going to change in the next year, a few years. For the moment, data science is uh, free in a sense. So you, you can call yourself data scientist, data analyst, data engineer, uh, without uh, uh, any professional accreditation in many countries. This is going to change. Hi, Prof. We, we can't hear you again. 
Can you please check your audio? And uh, can I conclude? Here is the final part. Feel free to contact me and uh, thank you very much. Can you, could you hear me? Oh yes, you... we, heard, we heard your final. Yes, we can hear you. We heard you. Oh, very good. So thank you very much. So I, I will come, I will, will stop sharing the screen, coming back to the main, um, and then uh, if there are questions uh, while the, this is going on, I will, um, uh, I will try to answer the questions if I may. Thank you. Wow, thank you so, so much, bro. That was a wonderful session. Can we all drop the fire emoji? And let's thank Pro. Thank you so much, Professor Enrico. Thank you. Thank you very much. So I, I will start to see if I can answer some of the questions. Okay. 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 So let me just look uh, at questions. Yes. So what? How do we organize? There is. There are other speakers now, I guess. So I, I will. Yes. So I leave it to you, Warren. Okay. So we can actually we can take the question. We will take the question after after the old session. So we'll take the question after the session. Many of them have been answered. So I, I will uh, I will see a, li a little bit what has not been answered. Okay, please go, go on and I, 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 will, I will do so. All right, thank you so much, Prof. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay, so our next session will be a quiz session. So I'm going to invite Ezekiel Ezekiel, we, Ezekiel, so it's time for the quiz session. So it will come up to so give us direction on how this will go. Thank you, Ezekiel. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's time for the quiz session. Let me share my screen. Okay, please, can you see my screen? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, so in this quiz, uh, we'll be using Kahoot. Okay, please everyone kindly, uh, kindly click on this link or follow this link. And then here is the game pin. Then in the nickname, I would like you to use your first name and your mobile number because I'll be giving data grant for the five uh, best uh, participants in this quiz. Thank you, kindly follow it. Follow the link, www.caos.it, and then under the game pin, so you put this on the, under the game pin, and your nickname will be your first name. For example, my first name is Ezekiel, so I will type Ezekiel in the nickname, and then my phone number, which is 070, and so on, you put it there. So we'll be able to use your nickname to identify you for the data grant for the best five uh, participants. Thank you. All right. So I can see many people are joining me. Thank you. So I will be waiting for like one minute and then we start the quiz. All right, thank you for joining. Thank you. Great, thank you. So I'm going to start now.
Okay, great. So we start now. So you have uh, 20 seconds, 14 seconds left, 13, 12, 10, 9, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Great. This is second question, true or false question. You have seven seconds left. Time is over, let's go. As you can see, here are questions on statistics, data science, machine learning, just to prepare you on what is ahead of you.
uh, for your information, we'll be stopping this quiz at the 12th uh, quiz. Make sure you do your best. Thank you. This is the last quiz for this session. Thank you. Third position. This is the second position. The first position has 10, 4, 7, 1 points. Oh, great. Okay, so the first person <laughs> that scored very well in this quiz is Oluwa Femi. Thank you so much. The second person is uh, Benedict. Thank you. And the third person is Ran. Great. So Sarah, I will leave over to you. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Ziko. Well done, everyone. We've all done pretty well. Okay, so the winner, can you please drop your... Okay, Ziko, we are looking at the first five, the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah. So now so we you... do the Okay, okay. So let's just get the fourth and fifth position. Okay, so can you please drop your name, phone number, and email address so that we can get we can get the data grants across to you. Hi, wow, this is fantastic. I mean, a lot of people are winning. Uh, exactly. <laughs> just for data protection. So I, I think it's best um, the winners. Uh, should send their details to AI community at data science Nigeria.ai. Uh, so the email address is dropped on the chat room. Uh, so AI community at data science Nigeria.ai. Take it up. Okay. 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 So um, they should have a title. Leko. Yeah, that's that's fine. So please um, count winner as your mail title, uh, so that we can be able to um, make reference to that. So okay, maybe. thank you so much. Is it okay? Can you please list out the win name of the winners again? Okay, we have Olua Femi 08066, Benedict 081193. We have Ran, we have AZ, and we have Assis. So, I hope we all get that. Okay, so May title will be Kaut winner. Thank you so everyone for participating in this. So our next session will be on studying in UK at uh, University of Success admission process. Everything about University of Success. And to lead us in this will be Tosi at ABC. Tosi, okay, so let me just, let me just try and share my screen. So that's we can hi hi sir can you hear me i can hear you excellent i will I, okay great you will share your screen from your end oh that yeah fine. i share okay, my screen okay okay that will be fine so Tosi is, is the senior internet okay no go on go on okay is a senior international leader at the university of success where he's responsible for students recruitment and stakeholder engagement he completed a master's degree in the UK with distinction, and he has over 10 years experience in international education, coaching, learning, and development. His passion is about sharing his own experience as a former international student to help prospective students explore their study options and for career success after, after University of Success. So, Tosin will share his success tips with us 
It will share tips for making the most out of your time at the university so that you can position yourself better for a post-study opportunity. So Tosi, over to you. Thank I'm you. just trying to find my slides now. But while I'm doing that, that was just I'm um, enjoying the quiz so much. Is um like who wants to be a millionaire? Except I'm the only one who hasn't won anything. So Sarah, <laughs> what's go? What's going on with that? What, what's up with that? Uh, <laughs> no, it was it was great. Um, really, congratulations to Lua Femi and others who participated. Yeah, and um, I, I think it was it's also a very nice way to share knowledge. Um, in a fun way, and hopefully we all learn something from it as well. So um, thanks, everybody. I would see if I can't um, share my, I can't make my video, um, I can't, um, sh so people can see me. So you can only see my screen. So I think that's probably, if you can en enable that setting, then I can do that. If not, then I will just get cracking. So Prof is uh, pretty much really kind of, laid the foundation most of you here i'm guessing i hope you're either data scientists in making aspiring data scientists or students thinking about being data scientists or ai professionals because if you're not uh and you just joined this webinar because you saw it online then you probably are like what am i doing here so hopefully you you, you um this is something that you already benefited and got value from, from Prof. So thank you again, Prof. So what I'll just do on my, on my side is I'll speak very briefly. Um, I won't try to do a long talk on this one. I'll just share some very, very quick things because Prof has told you about the course. He's giving you some trends and forecasts for you know, future of AI, AI data science, which I think is fascinating. Um, but some of you are also now thinking, right, I want to actually apply or some of you may have applied or maybe this conversation today is what gets you thinking that oh i actually would think about applying to study abroad um i'm guessing many of you are already thinking about that especially when you saw that the university of sussex will be running uh, will be partnering with data science nigeria for this session so what i'll do is i will try and answer those questions as best as i can to tell you about sussex about um, how to apply, about our scholarship options, and um, a little bit about uh, post-study work opportunities. And in the, in the middle of that, I will share very quickly about myself, uh, so you know who I am. Fortunately, I can't show you my video, but you can hopefully see my my uh, my photo, which is not, which I think is probably good. It's better than seeing my video, Seth. And I have a current student with me. Um, I'm a student who is um, currently on the MSc Data Science course. He's studying that at the University of Sussex, and he's going to join me and just tell you a little bit about his experience on the course as well. Because you know, um, the proof is in the podium, they say, and sometimes you know, hearing from current students and people who are on the course is um, might be much more valuable than hearing an old man like me talk. So, um, my name is Tosin ADBC. Um, this is what I'll cover. I can't uh, enlarge this screen, unfortunately. Oh well. So what well, this is what we're going to cover. I'm going to have a little talk about you know preparing to study abroad, obviously coming to the UK. I'll tell you about what makes Sussex unique to me, what I found out, and um, then my colleague uh, will come in and tell you is a current student on the course. And he'll tell you about the experience as well. So Sarah, please don't forget, you probably need to make him a host as well. I'm sure probably you, you, you have done that already. And then we'll have some, hopefully some time at the end for question and answer, because I want us to have some time for question and answer. So I'll make my talk very brief. So about me. So I came here, I was, um, whenever I come to do events like this, I'm always really, really happy. And also it makes me reflect back to, I don't know, 14, 15 years ago, I can't remember now, when I was kind of like, like where many of you are in this stage of your life where you're thinking, okay, what do I want to do um, in terms of my career? Do I want to carry on working? Do I want to further my education? And also, you know, if I, do I want to go study abroad? And, um, you know, that's a significant financial investment for most of you. Some of you probably be funding yourself, maybe. You might have your parents funding you. It's a lot of money. And um, coming to study, you have expectations, you have things that you, you would want to achieve, 
but sometimes you don't always have all this information before you leave your country. And I was in that situation. I knew that um, I knew where I was. I kind of have an idea of where I wanted to get to. The part in the middle, how do I want to get there, is where many students don't usually think about very much. And it's something I had to learn myself when I got here as a student. And it's that in between. And what I hope I'll be able to share with you today is that in between during your time on the course, how can you leverage that course to position yourself? And I'll pick up on something Prof and Enrico has, has already said is you, you know, it's about you, you are the product. You're not just coming, it's not just getting a course. Employers are not just looking for just somebody who's got a degree in data science or a degree in this or a degree in that. They want people who are able to solve problems. And you, your time at university, at, in the UK is for you to be able to look at how you can position yourself to actually tap into those opportunities. So something Prof said earlier was, what if there are problems that don't already exist? There's, a, there's no solutions for them in terms of maybe some codes and things like that. Why don't you create that? Why, rather than waiting to find it, if you're trained in this area and you see a problem, it could even be a problem within the university um, where you're studying. It could be a problem back home in your community. And you can develop something using your knowledge in data science. And that way you have what they call career capital. So think about career capital, think about shares and things like that. When you buy shares, you, you buy these shares and, you, and they, they, all, they give you dividends, right? And you can trade off your dividends at the time you're ready. That's what career capital is. You need to start building them up. And if you come in and just say, I'm gonna get a degree, I'll just come and study. And then when I'm finished, I'll go and get it. I'll get a job. It's not as straightforward as that. That is possible, but don't forget there'll be many other students who are got a degree just like you. So you need to kind of think, how am I able to position and develop myself and make use of the opportunities that the university, where I'm studying at, um, can give me to get there. And this is where Sussex is very, very unique. And I'll tell you why I think for me, um, I think Sussex is a very exceptional university to study. So let me go back in time a little bit. So one of the things I was trying to do when I was coming to study was the first thing was fees. I know some people like, if, if you, if, I mean, if you're, if you're funding yourself, you don't think too much about the fees, right? But if you guys, you know where I'm coming from, you know, here, you understand. So you're like, I want to fund my, I want to fund this thing, it's expensive. So the first thing I was thinking is the fees. So I had somebody who was sponsoring me and they kind of told me how much they had, you know, it was uh, my family member. And obviously, if, I could only work with that. So the first, the most important factor in my mind was the tuition fee. Um, unfortunately, I also, so I was very greedy. I wanted the tuition fee. That was something I could afford. But I wanted to also go to a very good university that was really, really, really ranked highly. The two things are very difficult to mix together. So Sussex is a really highly ranked uni. And sometimes people will say, ah, oh, your tuition fee is too expensive, that kind of thing. So. That is one of the myths. That's a myth. I will, I will explain that to you today. So you understand that, yes, we are really, really highly ranked, but you can pursue your dream of study at Sussex which, because of our scholarships, okay? So I looked at tuition fees back then. And then if, assuming this, that's what you are doing today, this is what our fees generally look like. Now, um, our fees would range from between 18,500 to about 22,250 depending on the course, okay? Um, so uh, it would depend on the course. Uh, different courses have slightly different fees, but if you were to come study with us, this is what you'd be thinking about, say for September intake, this is our rough fees. But remember what I said about people thinking automatically, oh, the tuition fee is still expensive, ah, can't afford it. And then they start thinking, I have to look at another university that the fee is actually less than Sussex, right? Now, this is what we offer you at the University of Sussex. We have a wide number of scholarships that um, if you're interested in data science and artificial intelligence, you guys are in a very, you're a very select group. So we have a scholarship that is being offered. Um, it's a very competitive scholarship. It's mostly for UK students, but international students are also going to be considered. And it's up to 10,000 pound scholarship. Um, like I said, it's mostly for home students, which are UK students, but they also, it's also open for international students to apply for, but there's no guarantee that, you know, if it, it will not go to 
majority um, UK student. So that's the one that is £10,000. You apply for that. And if you get that, that's £10,000 automatically off your, that fee. So let's assume that your tuition, tuition fee is 22500 and you get 10K off. That's actually what you'd be paying. Now, we also have for the MSc in data science. Now, the MSc in data science is in the School of Math and Physical Sciences. So that is Prof's school. So Prof is actually in that school. And Prof is very, very involved in delivering that course as well. So you, if you enroll on our MSc data science, you will get an automatic £3,000 scholarship straight away. So you don't need to apply for it. Then we have our two other courses, which are in the schools of engineering and informatics. Now, the £3,000 that you would get for the data science is because we give an automatic £3,000 to Nigerian students. We call it the Sussex Nigeria Scholarships. So please, everything I'm saying today, just check it online, okay? So the Sussex Nigeria Scholarship is automatic 3000 You don't need to apply for it. It's not merit-based. You get that automatically. Now, if you are then going to study in the um, engineering and informatics school, which is where we have the MSc human and social data, um, human and social um, data science, and the MSc in artificial and adaptive systems, those two um, courses, you get 6,000 pound scholarship. Why? Why do, you Why do you ask? The reason is because the a School of Engineering and Informatics, they also have an additional 3,000 pound scholarship that they are offering this year. So you add that to the Nigeria scholarship, if you're studying on either of those two courses, you would get automatic 6,000 pounds of your fees. Automatic, you don't need to apply for that. So remember when I was saying, when you look at the fees and actually the reductions and the scholarship that we offer, it really brings our course, our fees down to a level that actually might be lower than some other universities that you might think, oh, Sussex is going to be so much more expensive than them. But this scholarship for the 6,000 are just for this September. Look at that link that, that is in there. You can see all the scholarships we have. Now, I know somebody, some of the really sharp, the ones with sharp eyes among you are thinking, what's the difference between the data science and the human social data science? Um, it's just, is the same, it's for students who are both interested in training up to be data scientists. The only difference is the human social and social data science really takes in students from non-computing or non-mathematical backgrounds. So if you're here today and you're thinking, um, okay, I'm in business, I'm in um, humanities, I'm in um, social sciences, well, I, I have no chance. I, I, I'm really good in data. I'm really, I'm really interested in data. I'm very good at it, but uh, I wouldn't have any chance. That's not true. This course is designed to take you from that level and bring you in. However, the objective or one of the objective of this course is to also add in the human and social dimensions that are involved in doing a, in data science and AI. So if we're looking ideally at people who are willing to consider those additional factors, and then who are thinking about how could we, I potentially be in a policy job, shaping policy, or being in, involved in higher level work that has implications on the future and development of how um, data science is being utilized. So people who are interested in that, especially for maybe more of a policy angle, would really, really like those, um, the human social data science course. So I told I'll tell you one of the things I really like about Sussex. For me, um, yeah, the, this ranking is great, but I always tell people that one of the best proof of a university is in the alumni that they produce. And if you go online, you regularly see our young alumni from Sussex. They are change makers. They are making things happen, regardless of the field that they study in. They are leaders in their field. Young people, you'd see them. At, and that's why we attract the most, uh, we're, we, the UK university that tends to attract the highest numbers of Chimney scholars from Africa, I believe we're in the top five. And I think um, last year we were the highest for um, Nigeria. So we get a lot of Chimney. You know, Chimney is about leaders. Sussex, our, the way we train our students here, we really kind of develop future leaders. And we're not just talking precedents, we're talking leaders in your own field. So people who can make an impact, people who can address real world issues. And I think now is the time for data science to take on that role. 
you know, um, data scientists, AI, you know, what we conversations we have about, oh, AI is going to come and make Mr. Tosin um, obsolete. AI will come and Mr. Tosin won't have a job anymore. That's not true. You know, it's um, how do we coexist with AI and how do we keep the human side of things? And how do we have leaders who can make those conversations happen and make that transition to the fourth industrial, fifth industrial revolution, whatever it is for us. And it's um, we need leaders and game changers who keep the human elements and advance society for all of us. And that's really what our university is all about. We equip you with those skills because when you go out to the companies you want to work, um, if you finish in the UK and you want to work is people who can make things happen. Employers are looking at people who can come and create value and solve problems. So these are some of the other alumni that we produced. Again, I told you I'll show you some of the things I think makes us really, really unique. And one, two, three, four, five. So that's five former presidents and five, um, two vice presidents just from Africa alone that I've studied at this university. So again, um, yeah, that's a testament of our quality and the kind of pedigree of our alumni. So in terms of our entry requirements, we would normally I want to have a strong 2-2 um, or a second, at least we, if you have a second class lower, you can apply, but we normally look for a high 2-2 and for a few courses, we may ask for a second class upper, but usually if you have a 2-2, go ahead and apply. The only thing I didn't say, going back to the scholarship again is, the deadline, so we, we, are, we have a bit of a challenge here. Our deadline for our scholarships, are, uh, 1st of August is the official deadline. Now, if you apply after that, we'll still consider your application. Now, 1st of August is this Sunday. Now, to just avoid any issues or any challenges or whatever, I would encourage you, if this sounds like you've enjoyed this session, you go online, you research the university, do your research you know, find out more for yourself. If it appeals to you, you like the courses, you like the sound of um, what uh, the things I'm telling you and you verify them yourself, then put in your applications and try and do it by the 1st of August. So that way you'll be able to get the scholarships, okay? If you do apply after that, just um, make sure that if uh, you contact Data Science Nigeria because uh, they would help you with your application as well. So we're working with them very closely and they can guide you and help you with your application to the University of Sussex, especially if you end up applying after the deadline, okay? Please, please, please um, take advantage of these guys because they are amazing. And it's been an absolute joy to have worked with them on this project. Now, rankings, important, obviously. Uh, they're not everything, but they are important. The one I really find for me is uh, ranking as first in the world for development studies for the last five years. So University of Harvard is the second in the world for development studies. Sussex has been beating them for the last five years. That tells you a lot about our pedigree when it comes to working in develop on, around development issues, but also in developing countries, emerging economies, that kind of thing. And that cuts across all our subject areas. So um, you would not be surprised to find that many of your professors will be doing a lot of work in countries outside of the UK, okay? Um, and the world impact ranking is another very strong one. It's an area where, you know, where you can see that we're top 10 in the UK for that and top 50 in the world. So check our rankings if that's something that appeals to you, if that's an important thing for you. Now, Prof has already talked about our location. See, I've been inviting now for at the University of Sussex now for about eight years, and it's fantastic. Um, I've, I've, I mean, I'm enjoying it. Obviously, that's why I haven't left. Uh, but when you look at it, we're by the sea. It's just nine minutes away. Um, our campus is just nine minutes away from the seafront, from Brighton City, and um, sorry, to the Brighton train station. And then the seafront is just a few minutes, a few walk, a few minutes walk away. But we're just one hour away from London. So for those of you who want to be near London but not live in London, because you may feel it's a bit more expensive, you can live close to London and not really be in London. Now, this is our campus. I know Prof was talking about that. We are the only UK university in a national park. So you've got the seafront on one side, you've got London just an hour away, and then you have this place that just looks like in the middle of nowhere. It's actually a national park and it's beautiful. When I say national park, my please, it's not um, our national park where we have lions in Nigeria. There's nothing, the, the wildest thing you see here is sheep, sheep and, um, and, and maybe some fuck, and what they call it, rabbits. So there's nothing to worry about here. 
Um, the thing that some of you might like is that big building that looks the blue one. That's the America Express um, Community Stadium. So for those of you who follow Premiership football, that's where we have, um, we have games. And I've had the pleasure of going to watch some games there. One of them was with when Leon Balogun was at Brighton and Hove. He actually got me a ticket to watch a game. And that was when Brighton and Hove, uh, that was when Manchester United came to play. Um, we didn't win, of course. Uh, my, all you Man you fans. Um, so in terms of our entry requirement, uh, English language, if you have your WIAC or your NECO, you don't need to worry about doing any of these English language tests. If you have a grade C in, in, in your WIAC or your NECO, that's fine. We would accept those. And yeah, employability. Um, a lot of the things, I'm just going to wrap it up and say again that getting that job after you graduate really comes down to taking advantage of the opportunities you have. I know that having studied in Nigeria myself, I went to IFE. So great IFE, the, I don't want to say the only African university because the people in this audience will start to start to vote me down now. But uh, I want to, if, if there's any if, uh, people in the house, let, uh, let me hear you just put some comments in there. And um, it was amazing time. It was, uh, I did uh, a bachelor's degree and then I came to study here. And um, my time at IFE, you know, for those of you who have studied in Nigerian universities, it is what it is, but we have a different culture when it comes to our working with our professors where you, <laughs> so for instance, if prof was teaching me, I would be calling him by name. That's how it works in Nigeria. Imagine if you could start calling your professor by name. You, you hear the story of your life. So um, it's a different culture and we don't always have that relationship. Here is different. You know, all the support is there. The resources work. You have the equipment, you have the IT. You you're not making that travel and paying all that expense and not to, to not take advantage of everything you've got. The worst thing you can do is to just come in and not, and, and not take advantage of the opportunities. Because remember, if you're going to get this, the post-study work opportunity, because don't forget the UK government has now introduced the post -study, the graduate route visa, which means that for when you graduate, you can actually stay and work for two years in the UK. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm dab, dab, them, no, dimming your opportunities, but if you want to get um, that, those kind of graduate jobs where you graduate, you need to be thinking strategically. You need to understand that it's not about, I'll just do a degree, finish, and then I'll start applying for a job. You might be too, you might have left it late. You still get a job, you, but you may not, you may struggle because you've not planned from the beginning. So thinking about when you get to the university, what are those opportunities I can plug myself into? How can I, you know, if I, if I have an entrepreneurial idea, for instance, with maybe a data science um, idea, we have an incubation center at the university. Many of our students have set up successful business ventures from there. And you even get, if you pitch and you get, and you win one of the um, top three um, places, you get some serious money to take your ideas forward. You know, if you, you could think about getting a placement opportunity. I'll give you an example. One of my friends, uh, a student friend currently at Sussex just got an amazing placement with a, with a firm in the UK. And do you know what he did? He had a module, just one of his courses, uh, during his course, he had a course, uh, one, a module that they were doing. And they asked, oh, what are the different ways you could think about just um, presenting your, um, your essay? And he decided he was going to start a podcast. And because the university has resources, has everything, all the equipment, you can borrow it for free. And that's how we started doing podcasts. His podcast is amazing. And as a result, his supervisor, his tutor, his lecturer, like, like Prof is here today, just contacted um, one of the companies that he works with and said, look, this student is amazing, what he's produced. And they said, let's talk to him. And he went and got a placement with them. And guess what? is now helping train them up in Kazakhstan in other countries how to run podcasts and they're offering him a job. But what's fantastic about it is he also has done a podcast on Nigeria Twitter. You know the Twitter um, ban in Nigeria? He did a fantastic one and it's published. I'm actually gonna put something because I, I always like to promote um, our students who are doing amazing work and I'll put his, a link to his um, podcast in the chat. 
take a moment and when you are free, just listen to it. It's actually brilliant it, um, what is done. Uh, so the, to wrap up for me is thinking about yourself as how can you leverage your time at the University of Sussex, use the opportunities that you've got because all the resources are there. Forget about the culture we, we have in Nigeria whereby, okay, you may be afraid to talk to people. The worst thing you can do is to suffer in silence. If you're not sure about something, talk to somebody. I, I got my let my people go degree. For those of you who studied um, in Nigeria University, you know what let my people go is. That's the degree that they gave me, that I finished with. I came to the UK and I got a distinction. Now, I'm not smarter than any of you. I'm just a regular guy. And they just, I knew where I was coming from and I had a plan. And if I can get a distinction and come here to study, you guys can do much, much better than I've got to where I am today. And I hope that this um, conversation is helpful and it gets you thinking. And also um, I've put a link to Jewel's podcast in there for all of you. Take a look at what a student just came up with for me and got a job now because he started a podcast um, in the UK and he's already training other companies about it. Thank you so much, guys. And I'll pass on to my student friend who is here. and I'll just let him um, say uh, about his experience. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right, that's great. Uh, so I don't have a slide because of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but So I just wanted to share a bit of my experience, um, you know, coming to study at Sussex, I, I like you guys, most of you guys, I am from Africa. So I come from Zimbabwe and um, I came over last year to study the MSc data science at Sussex. And uh, what I can say is that, you know, so far it's been a really, really good choice for me because, um, you know, one of the biggest advantages also of studying in the UK or at Sussex is that the the course is only one year so a, a lot of you guys would be used to your master's degrees being like two years if you go to america for example or to australia uh, and i did look at those options also you know they were offering the masters for two years so sometimes it may seem cheaper but because you have to study for two years it actually becomes more expensive uh, and you know uh, coming here to Sussex, I've been able to learn a lot of things in the space of a year. So this is a really good uh, choice for you guys. You know, there's just four things I wanna I wanna you know talk to you about my experience. The first one is that you know the the course, the MSc Data Science, and um, the rest of them, uh, it's very practical. So. In, you know, I, I came, uh, I was studying my undergraduate in Zimbabwe, and um, a lot of the stuff we did was very theoretical also. So coming over here, uh, you know, the projects that we, we worked on uh, for assessments, for example, and the teaching, the, everything is very practical. So it helps you to have hands-on experience. Um, for when you're, 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 you start working, for example. And the second thing is that the data science course or these other courses, they have options. So you have options that you choose. For, for me, that was a very important thing. You have different modules that you can choose to do. So for example, I'm very interested in making sense of languages, for example. So I chose, for example, this semester, I, I chose to do advanced natural language processing, which has to do with uh, the data science behind um, uh, languages, for example, how computers, you know, try to make sense of uh, all the language data that that's out there. So, you know, and I also did uh, another option, which was web technologies. So it's not only that you you are if you're doing this data science or AI you're only limited to that kind of um, that kind of work. For example, after you're done with that, you can be. For example, I studied web technologies, right? And it gives you a platform also 
if if you want to work as a programmer, for example, uh, if in the future you decide, oh, maybe I don't want to be a data scientist, I want to be a programmer, you can use some of the experience that you that you have from this course to work as a programmer or any kind of technology work really. So, so the options will, will be very important. Uh, you have options to study what you're very interested in. And uh, the third thing here is that also the course was very, uh, the teaching that we received helps us to, to be able, it gives us a very good platform for, for example, if you want to go further and study your PhD. So some someday I may decide that, you know, I'm interested in studying my PhD. And I feel like the, the course that I did at um, Sussex really helped me because the projects were also, uh, they're not just, um, you know, uh, they, they have a research component to them. So I, whenever we got assi assignments, for example, or we had to go there, do our own research and implement the ideas that we got from that research in our own way, uh, which really helped helped us to broaden our ideas on 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 that so in the future i may decide to do a phd and i feel like this course really gave me a good platform for that and then the last thing is that uh guys uh i have to be honest here i i think that sussex has really really invested well in uh terms of human resources so our tutors and uh really uh very good academics for example um they have done a lot of research in their fields of study and um, everything, every question that I had, you know, my lecturer could answer it in a very good way and uh, they could help me to understand it very well. So the human resources skills uh, are incredible. My, my one of, you know, the course convener, you've met him, uh, Enrico, um, really great academic. Uh, one of my tutors was uh, Dr. Julie Weeds. So if you're gonna be doing uh, natural language processing, for example, you will meet uh, Dr. Julie Weeds and she's a really great researcher in um, the natural language uh, engineering. And uh, so yeah, the human skills are really great guys. So you will you re definitely enjoy this. Uh, thank you very much for, for listening. And uh, yeah, I hope you make the higher choice and choose uh, Sussex. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Luis. Thanks a lot, Tosin. I think it's been a very fantastic time uh, of, yeah. of talking to you. Uh, thanks a lot, Sarah. I mean, it's it's been awesome, right? Yeah, it's been an awesome session. It's been a very, very wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you, Tosin. Thank you, Luis. Awesome. Uh, so Please. because of our time, um, yeah. we are supposed to wrap up this event um, at 6.30. 6.30? 31 already. Uh, but, um, well, I think most of the questions we have right here, I've already been answered, but I'll just create the indulgence of everyone, uh, perhaps maybe for five minutes, uh, we can just go through questions so that um, just to address some of them. The other ones, uh, what we can do is to export the questions and share with the facilitators so that they can answer. All right. So, but in the meantime, um, so to see, we have some questions on the Q and A. Um, I don't know if you if if you have access to the Q and A. Um, yeah, I, I can see them. Okay, so um, I don't know if you have questions, um, answers to any of. Do you want me to just breeze through like in one line answers to all of? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. Few of them, not all of them, few of them, and the other yeah. one always export the question. Yeah. Okay. So there's a question on um, I've got HND computer science. Um, would you be applied? We normally. Uh, we require a bachelor's degree, but if you've got an um, HND um, with lots of experience, then obviously give it a go. But the other option might be a pre-masters. So there's someone who said they've got a third third year in university. Um, oh, this is for data science. That question is for you. 
Is there any way my CD scholarship for this? Is there, any, is there an easy way of application or better CD scholarship program for DSM members to the university? So we're looking forward to build on our relationship with Data Science Nigeria. Uh, but like I said, the deadline for our scholarship is 1st of August. I would encourage you to work with Data Science to submit your application. If you don't make that deadline, then you know if you're coming through Data Science, then that's something that would be able to We'll be able to help make a case and help you make sure that you still get your scholarship if you apply after the deadline. Okay, so so to benefit from the six thousand, are we applying individually? Every so the six thousand pounds is individual. You're applying on your own. It's not related to anybody else. That your application is your application and yours alone. Okay, so there is data science. Some questions for you there. How does one claim the six thousand pounds discount? You won't be getting it in cash. It's going to be given to you as a fee reduction. So that means if, you're, if your course is eligible, so that would be the Human Data Science or the MSc Artificial Intelligence, then you will get it after you, when you, as part of your offer letter, you would, when, before you get your visa letter, which we call a CAS, then it will be awarded to you as a fee reduction. So your tuition fee, before you come to Sussex, you will see reduction of 6,000 pounds reflected before you arrive here. If I want to start the undergraduate degree, is this webinar for me? And um, no, not really. This webinar is mostly for people who already have a degree, but if you're interested, I mean, I always, I always say, start here, the young shall grow, talk to data science. They have amazing things that they do, and you could start your journey with one of their free programs for sure. And um, do we offer virtual classes, online degrees? Yes, we do have, we have a few, but nothing in data science, I'm afraid, or artificial intelligence at the moment. As I, was, I, was, I also wanted to know what undergraduate degree, again, not for this um, session. Can the scholarships be combined? Good question. Um, yeah, if you, we've already combined two scholarships to get the 6,000 pound scholarship. So that's a combination scholarship right there. What is the process for the £6,000 discount? There is no process. If you apply for the two courses that have £6,000, then you would, or if you get an offer from the University of Sussex, make sure you try and do it before the deadline. If not, then obviously let us know. You will get £6,000 automatically awarded. And if you apply for the MSc Data Science, you will get automatic £3,000. You don't need to apply for it at all. Um, somebody is asking about intakes. We only have one intake for these programs, and that is September intake, unfortunately. So if you miss the September intake, it would have to be for next intake. There's somebody asking about first class honors. We have another scholarship. I didn't talk about that. It is the Chancellor's International Scholarship. Um, well, the this we call it the Chancellor International scholarship or the engineering and international eu scholarship take a, check our website that one is five thousand pound scholarship on its own so um it's for students who have really really high grades so you can look at that and you might be eligible for that if you're already old enough offer with sussex university can you still apply for the ai for the same september if you already have an offer for sussex then you should already have gotten an email telling you what your fee reduction should be. If you haven't got that, then obviously drop me a message or my colleague, Louis. Um, Louis is the person to contact. Uh, you have his WhatsApp, I put it in the chat and he can advise you, but also contact postgraduate admissions. They would have been the one that I've sent you your offer letter. There's another undergraduate inquiry. Um, I'm a mechanical engineering student. How do I apply for apply AI? Um, I'm thinking that's AI and adaptive system. Well, again, to apply, you just I, I would encourage you to chat with Data Science Nigeria and help you with your application. Um, looking at, just consider the fees. You know, like I told you my own story, and I looked at my funding. You're going to, need to provide evidence of your funds before you get a visa letter. So just sort that out. Look at the scholarship, and then obviously, if you want to apply, it's all online. And there's a question um, about somebody asking if there's a fee with there is no processing fee the university of sussex does not charge you for to apply or charge you for anything the only thing you'll be paying for is your tuition fee obviously so any money that you pay before you get to the uk is going to be to your visa application that's it and any other things that you need to pro, uh, pro provide for your visa application as a current physics undergraduate i need a guide on applying of applying to data science ai and I can use the field in solving climate energy problems. That is brilliant. 
and what are the career options? I would say that um, that's something that the colleagues are data, you're, you're in good hands with data science on that one. I'm sure they have lots of amazing information for you. And I'm, I'm guessing you could also reach out to Prof. Um, if you are going to be coming to study on the course, I'm sure Prof can give you some tips. Um, will applications be open some other time outside September? I'm afraid not. It's, it's, we only have September intake. Yeah, I've said already, no application fee. Um, is there any special application? So first class, I've already talked about that. Payment structure, very good question, Timit. Timit, thanks for that. I forgot about that. Yeah, you don't have to pay all that, all the rest of your money at once. So we have a tuition deposit. You need to pay two thousand pound deposit for your before you get your visa letter. So once you get your visa letter, that's what you then use to apply after you've paid two thousand. So that means when you come to Sussex, you just start the course. You can then discuss with the university to set up installments and a payment plan of uh, between three installments or more, depending on your situation. You can chat with the finance team to take care of that. Another question about first class. Sorted. Non-technical background. Can I apply for data science? Yes, but that would be the MSc Human and Social Data Science that we talked about. And that's the one that has a £6,000 scholarship. So take a look at that. I hope you are at the session. So we've probably already covered that. Can we apply for this September? A good uh, melody? Absolutely. If you want to get a scholarship to avoid any issues, just apply by 1st of August, even if you may not get your reply or a decision by then, please apply. Um, God sent link to apply. Um, again, talk to Data Science to help you out in terms of that. But you can find the information on our postgrad on our website if you wanted to look look out, look for it yourself. Um, if I have a skill, can I work and study part time? You are allowed to work in the UK twenty hours a week as an international student during term time. That's doing as a student after term, which will be when you graduate. Then you can work until until you. In fact, until you can no longer stand if you want. There's no restrictions on working. And then when you graduate, then you can look at getting a graduate level job. But don't forget when you're working as a student, you're not, the chances of you getting a graduate job, that's not what they are designed for. You probably be doing part-time work and maybe hospitality, cleaning, maybe some office work, that kind of thing. So it, those are not usually high, high paying graduate level job. And um, somebody said, I uh, have a BS in physics. Can I apply for MSc? That's for Sani Nazir. Thanks for that. Yes, you can. Um, with a physics degree, you would definitely be able to, if you have at least a, a good second class upper, which is a high second, sorry, a high second class lower, you should be able to apply for the MSc data science or the MSc artificial intelligence if you wanted that. Are uh, there additional scholarships? Check out our website. Don't forget all the deadlines are first of August. Jesus, I am just going, man. I'm almost out of breath. I then need to prove English language. And um, that's for Jinad. I think I've talked about that. If you have your wire or your neko, no need for all those annoying TOEFL and GSATs. And um, we, we know Nigerians, um, English is our, it's our bread and butter. So we don't need to provide any of that. We just need to see your wire or your neko. Currently in your final year to resume, will I be eligible for scholarship? Well, if you're in your final year and you're still sitting, the, the, the program starts in September. The latest, in, the latest you can start is sometime in October. So um, you may be able to study some of your program online because of COVID. Um, details will be released in due course. So you may not need to arrive physically. So that might mean that you could still join the course, but there is still a latest date in which you can enroll. So if you don't enroll by that time, then you wouldn't be able to join the course. I would prefer data science masters over the others, and I'm coming from life science. How feasible is it for me? That's a good question. If that's the one you really want to do, um, I'm not sure. Prof is probably be in the best position. If you drop an email or WhatsApp to Louis in that chat um, that, uh, on the screen, they will be able to advise you on that. But if you have a lot of experience, a lot of experience, and maybe you've done a lot of work and you have other qualifications in data science, maybe that could be considered. I don't know. But um, Prof can also answer. If you drop an email, I can forward that on to Prof, who can tell you if you could be considered. Can you combine the 10,000 and the 6,000? Uh-uh, I did Kemi now. Can you combine the 10,000 and the 6,000? Uh-uh, my sister. So no, we don't. So the 10,000 one is the one that is the, is, like I said earlier, it's uh, a very separate one, but you should definitely be putting an application in for that. But it's mostly 
aimed at UK students, but they also will consider international. But no, you cannot consider both. Um, it will be one or the other. Can one defer admission if given? You normally can defer your admission for one year at the University of Sussex. Uh, so, but you need to let us know that you would not be coming and you can defer to next year. You cannot defer a scholarship though, just so we just to make that point clear. I'm completely. Blah, 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 blah. If somebody's asking something similar, will the scholarship be available for next year? Well, it I don't know um, as of now, but I can say that the scholarships are definitely available for this year. Uh, if you just keep on, just watch our website and the scholarship pages, and you're going to see when we start to announce all our new scholarships over the coming months. Um, and I think that that's been answered. Why Ekneko has been answered. Yeah. Can I work as well? part time has been answered. Payment been answered. Payment plan again been answered. I think I have done. Also, I think I've done some justice to this. Also, thank you so much, Jose. I mean, so amazing. Thank you very much. Uh, so I think on this note, we can uh, wrap up at this point. Uh, special thanks to Tosi, Luis, and Prof. Uh, thanks a lot for sharing, you know, um, wonderful insight with all the participants. I mean, I'm sure everybody um, learned one or two things, right? So we really, really appreciate it. So we will engage all the participants. Uh, we are hoping uh, for engagement with all the participants who are interested in learning more about how they can apply. And then we'll take uh, the conversation uh, forward even after this webinar. So thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, do enjoy the rest of your day. At uh, this point, we'll draw the curtain. Uh, but if you do wish to uh, stay for another two minutes, we have a video we uh, intend to play. And I think I just uh, I'll just share my screen and then play the video uh, while we take uh, exit. Hello, my name is Kishan Lang, British High Commissioner to Nigeria, and I want to share some good news with you. Since leaving the European Union, the UK government is introducing new visa routes, both for students and those looking to work in the UK. In July, we opened our new graduate route. So for those of you who are studying at a British education establishment up to graduate or postgraduate level, studying a degree or master's, you will now be able to stay in the UK for two years. And if you've studied a PhD, you'll be able to stay for three years and you will no longer need a sponsor to apply for these visa routes. Um, if you've completed your education and you're looking to secure a job, you can also apply for our skilled worker route. So we think these are great innovations and they're designed to attract the brightest and the best. And indeed last year, I'm glad to say, we were able to offer 17,500 visas to Nigerian students and that's an 83% increase. So I hope you'll believe me when I say we really, really are looking to attract the brightest and best Nigerian students to study in the UK and then indeed to stay on and work with us, sharing their skills as we join together in our great UK-Nigerian partnership. Thank you for listening. All right, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye. Yeah, bye, everyone. Great. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Yeah, bye bye. Thanks, everybody. I'm just replying to a few more people in the chat if uh, for anyone that I may not have answered. But thank you so much, everybody. Awesome. Thank you.